so if you wouldn't mind just keeping it up just a little bit. Oh, sorry, that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my feet weren't touching the ground. The mic. <laughs> yeah, my feet weren't touching the ground. It was a little. Okay. I can relate. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Me too. Okay, but you good now? Yes. Okay, thank you. Um, were you born and raised in Las Vegas? No, I was not. Where were you born and raised? Um, I was born in South Chicago Heights and raised in Indiana. Um, and do you have any siblings? Yes, I do. I have an older brother. And were you raised by the mother and the father, or who was it that raised you? Um, my parents got divorced when I was about seven years old, and we lived with my mom. Okay. Um, would you say that you had a, a, a normal childhood? Yes, I would definitely say it was very normal. Um, and did you graduate from high school? Yes, I did. How old were you when you graduated? I was 18. Um, after you graduated, what did you do next? Um, I worked at the Nike outlet for a little while, and then I, uh, I started doing some fetish videos and moved on to adult work. So how was it that you got involved in that? Um, I just woke up one day, and I wasn't really happy with my life. Like, I, I needed some excitement. Um, I wanted to try something new. Okay. And then, so how did um, you get involved in like the fetish videos? Like, how does that happen? Um, I started doing just photography and mod modeling at car shows, things like that. And I just decided like, oh, I have cute feet. I'll take pictures of my feet. And then fetish videos came from that. And then did it kind of just evolve from there? Yes, it did. Okay. Um, you mentioned it earlier. You were uh, you worked in the adult film industry. How for how many months or years did you work in that industry? Um, about a year and a half. And um, at some point, did you move to Las Vegas? Yes, I did. And do you remember what year it was that you moved to Las Vegas? It was February of 2013, I believe. And when you moved, did anyone move with you? Yes, my mother moved with me. And when you both moved to Las Vegas, did you live together? Yes, she lived with me. Okay. Um, do you have quite an affinity for animals? Yes, I do. Right. Do you, you have several pets? Yes. So during this time period that we're going to talk about in a little bit, which would be August of 2014, can you explain um, how many animals you had and you know, what kind of animal they were? Um, I have two dogs and I had I believe five snakes at that time, and I had some rats, um, feeder rats for the snakes, and um, John and I had shared two ferrets. Okay. Um, you said you used the term John. Uh, who's that? And you refer to him as War Machine. Okay. And was he your boyfriend at one time? Yes. Okay. Do you see him in the courtroom today? Yes, I do. Can you please um, just describe an article of clothing that he's wearing for me? He's wearing a white button-up shirt. Okay. Um, Your Honor, may the record reflect that she's identified the defendant? Yes, it will. Thank you. Um, what were the, I'm going to ask you some questions about your animals in a moment. So what were the names of the dogs so I can refer to them by name? Uh, Patrick Swayze and Cleopatra. Um, so we were speaking about the defendant just a second ago. Um, how was it that you met him? Um, we met at an adult shoot for Hustler. Um, and it was just a, it was just a, like a photograph spread for Hustler magazine. Was it your, like, did you have an appointment to do the photo shoot at Hustler, or did he? How did that work out? He did. They had asked him to do the shoot, and he said, I would only do it if you got Christy to do it. Okay. Did you know him at that point? No, I did not. Okay. Um, and so you agreed to do the shoot? Yes. And so um, the two of you obviously must have hit it off? Um, yeah, a little bit. Um, I was very standoffish. Um, I didn't want a relationship. I was very, I felt very independent and I didn't want a man at that time. Okay. Um, but at some point you came into a relationship, right? Yes, we did. And so when was that? Um, just a few weeks after. Okay. Um, you see uh, Mr. Copenhaver in the courtroom today. Does he look different in any way to you? He seems to have lost a little bit of weight. Okay. Um, I'm going to show you some pictures. Towards the 
been marked for purposes of identification as states 188 through 197. If you wouldn't mind thumbing through some of those photographs, um, and then I'll have some questions. I just want to make sure that you uh, recognize them. and the defendant and an individual by the name of Corey Thomas? Yes, they are. And did those accurately reflect what the three of you looked like during that time period? Yes, they did. Okay, Your Honor, at this time I'd move to admit into evidence states proposed 188 through 197. Any objection? There is not. They're admitted. And permission to publish, Your Honor. Yeah, go ahead. Thank you. So I'm going to show you states proposed 188. I'm going to zoom out. When you say that the defendant has lost a bit of weight when you were dating him, was this more what he looked like? Yes, and at times a little bit heavier. Okay. Is he? I was. I should have asked. Was he a little? He was pretty lean in this photograph. Yes, he was. He was, This was the day before a fight, okay. so he, he had lost some weight for the fight. Um, showing you states one eighty nine. I'm going to zoom in. Does that accurately reflect the way he looked then as well? Yes, it does. And we see a black tank top that he's wearing. It says, I do alpha male shit. What, what is that about? That is his clothing company that he created. Okay. Showing you states 190. Would this also accurately reflect the way that he looked um, while you were dating him? Yes. How long did total did the two of you date? Uh, for about 15 months off and on. Okay. Um, when you started dating, how old were you? I believe I was 22. And how old was he? That would make him 32. Um, when you were living in Las Vegas, did he live here in Las Vegas? No, he did not. Where did he live? He lived in San Diego. So where, since it was kind of like a long distance relationship, where would the two of you spend most of your time? Uh, we would go back and forth between my house and San Diego, but I spent more time in San Diego for his training. Okay, so you had a home in San Diego as well? No, I, I would stay with him. Oh, I, I thought you said my house, but so he had a home in San Diego and you had a home in Las Vegas? Yes. Okay. Um, and so what types of things, like when you, you know, when the relationship was going well, what types of things did the two of you do for fun? Um, we would go to movies, we would just go to the park, drive around sometimes. Um, I don't like being in crowds. Um, I have really bad social anxiety, so it makes me uncomfortable. Um, and I was going to ask you, are you somewhat of a, a homebody? Yes, definitely. Um, and do you drink? Not at all. Do you do any drugs? Never. Um, and so, Mr. Copenhaver, did, he, did that lifestyle match with him as well? Um, for a while it seemed that it did, but at times it definitely did not suit him at all. Okay. Um, in the beginning, was he fine just staying kind of home and spending time with you, though? Yeah. In that 15-month period, if I were to ask you, like, how would you explain your relationship? What would you say? Um, our relationship was definitely very very passionate, um, and at times very violent, but sometimes extremely loving. Were there, um, were there extreme highs in that relationship? Yes, definitely. Were there extreme lows? Yes, there were. Also during your relationship, um, both of you are somewhat I should use the term like social figure or, or a celebrity. Would that be fair? Um, I would say public figure, yes. Public figure. Okay, thank you. I think that's a better, better word. Um, because of that, do you have like an Instagram account? Yes, I do. Um, like Facebook? Yes. All, a lot of different social media outlets? Yes. And during that time period, did the defendant as well? Yes. 
Um, was it common for both of you to constantly kind of update what was going on through those social, social media outlets? Yes. When the two of you first met, you've already testified that you were, you know, you were working as an adult film star. In the beginning, did he have any issues with that form of employment? Not at all. Um, that's actually how he found me. So I feel like he was totally fine with it. He had also worked in the adult industry, so I thought he would understand. Okay. Um, at some point, did his viewpoint towards your job change? Yes, it did. In what ways? Um, I wouldn't be able to have sex with him as frequently um, if I were working. Okay. Um, and he did not like that at all. Um, towards the end, when I would come home from shoots, he would be disgusted by me, and he would tell me he was disgusted with me. Okay. Um, he just generally didn't didn't like he didn't like sharing me with other people, which I totally understood. Okay. Um, did you when you got home? Um, would he want you to shower? Yes. Um, even if you showered like on the shoot, would he still want you to shower once you got home? Yes, he would. And you may have explained this, but I want to ask you a few more details. After, before or after you've done a shoot for an adult film, you cannot have sexual intercourse with like a partner, is that correct? For me, I couldn't. Um, for everyone it's different, but for me personally, it was just uncomfortable. Okay. Like uh, un un physically uncomfortable? Yes, physically uncomfortable. Due to the fact that you couldn't be intimate in these types of situations, would you try to please him in other ways or would you try to make concessions? Yes, I would. Can you explain how you would do so? Um, his sex drive was so, so high and we just didn't match in that way um, that explain, I would... I'm sorry, can you explain that when you say his sex drive was so high and you didn't match? Can you explain that please? Um, I'm not exactly a hypersexual person. I know it doesn't completely make sense with my adult industry background, but um, I only wanted to have sex maybe once a day, um, if not every two days, but he would want it two, three times a day, and I couldn't, I couldn't keep up. Um, so I had asked him if an open relationship is something that he would like to explore. Um, he, said, he said yes, he would like to do that, um, so I offered to let him have other women. Um, and then I would also try and give him ways to make him feel special, uh, such as doing things that I wouldn't, I wouldn't do in any other relationship, um, such as like trying anal in my personal life, which I had never done. Um, just things like that. I would try and give him positive affirmations all the time, that he was the best, that he was the biggest, that he was everything that I could ever need and more. Okay. So, because what you did for a living had, had become an issue between the two of you, um, are you saying that you had to develop you know, certain strategies to make him feel like he was special? Yes, of course. Um, and since you were sharing yourself you know, professionally in so many different ways with other people, did it make him feel better if he was allowed to do things to you or with you that no one had ever done? Yes. Now, in regards to the open relationship, was it open to you as well? Could you have? No. Okay. No, I didn't need. I didn't need another sexual partner. Um, I wouldn't be able to keep up with that if I can't keep up with him. Okay. So he was allowed to um, have sex with other women. If we had discussed it, and you know, I would have to okay it, or if we would go through Tinder together and we would choose women together, um, things like that. But I told him, you know, the minute that he felt like he had to lie to me about something was the minute he was doing something wrong. Um, but he wasn't as open as I had hoped he would be in, okay. the, in that situation. Okay. Um, I want to ask you some specific questions about uh, your consensual sexual, uh, sex life with the defendant. Um, you said that you tried to give him like affirmation in regards to you said you're the best and you're the biggest. What, what, like, can you give me an example? Like, what do you mean by that? Um, he would just constantly like to be told that he was the best, that he was the only one that could make me come, that you know he had the biggest dick, that um, just things like that. Would you give him those affirmations like face to face? 
uh, face to face, during sex, through text messages, if we were to Skype, things like that. Fair to say that sex was uh, something that was very important to him? Yes. Um, and I think in any relationship there's common words that people use. Did he have a specific word that he used for sex? Um, he, would, he would use sex a lot. Um, if he wanted rough sex, he would refer to it as rape. Okay. Um, in social media, if he was talking about sex, did he ever use the term, I think it's like pow pow or? Yes, he would. Is that what that meant, sex? Yes. Um, you just said the term rape. At some point in your relationship, was the dis a discussion brought up about simulated rape or what some people might refer to as rape fantasy? Yes, there was. And who brought that up? I did. And why did you bring that up? Um, I brought it up. It was something that I had thought about before that I had never acted out in any other relationship that I thought would give him like a sense of security that I could give him something that I haven't done with other people before. Okay. Um, and so you said you brought it up. Can you explain to me the conversation that you had with him? Was it in person, on the phone, via text message? I don't remember the exact conversation. Um, I don't remember um, whether it was through text message or not. I believe it was through text message, but I can't be sure. Okay. Um, and so, like, roughly from what you remember, what was the conversation in regards, like, do you want to do this, or...? Yeah, um, it was basically just asking if that was something that he was interesting, interested in exploring with me because it was something that I would be interested in trying. Um, I don't believe we went as far as, you know, creating our safe word or discussing the rules and the terms um, because when you, when you have a simula simulated rape fantasy, you have to go through the different, um, the different steps to make sure that it is safe and comfortable for both of you. Can you explain in your words what you believe a rape fantasy or a simulated rape is? A um, rape role play. There's, de there's lots of words that you can use to discuss that type of um, thing that two people can do. Yes, there are. Um, it's, it's basically just rough sex that can be, I don't know, you don't want to ruin the whole fantasy part of it by discussing everything but you want to lay down the groundwork of, you know, this is how it's going to be, this is where it's going to be, this is what I would like to happen, um, this is, you know, this is going to be the safe word that I say if I'm uncomfortable. Um, so that's, that's basically what it is. Did you ever want to be, like, surprised by it? No, I wouldn't want to be, I wouldn't want to be surprised by it. I would definitely give a day and a time, like, like a location where I would be at a certain time. Like this is what I would like to happen at this time. Okay. This is what I would like you to do to me or for me to do to you at this time. And what, um, you talked about safety mechanisms, like a safe word. Yes. Um, and I think you mentioned another one, I'm sorry. Was there another one like a, it was a safety word or am I making that up? Did you only say one? I, I feel like just a safe word. Okay, all right. Um, was that, where was that conversation or idea in regards to the length of your relationship? Would you say it was in the beginning, the middle, the end? I wouldn't really know. It wasn't at the end. I know that for sure, but it could have been the beginning or the middle. Okay. Was consensual choking something that was also done, I mean, your consensual sexual relationship with the defendant? Yes. Now, did you choke him? No, I wouldn't choke him. Okay. Um, he would choke you? Yes, he would. And would that be done at your request? Yes. Um, when that would happen, uh, were safety mechanisms used as well? Um, I would hold on to his hand, and if he gripped, if he gripped too tightly, um, I would squeeze onto his hand or grab onto his leg with my nails and push my nails into him, and then he would back off. Okay. Um, when you grabbed his hand and kind of squeezed, was he respectful and quit? Yes, every time. Um, when you grabbed his leg and dug your nails in or whatever, was he respectful and quit? Yes. At some point in your relationship, um, did you decide to leave the adult film industry? Yes, I did. Do you know when that was that you left? <coughs> um, let's see. It was probably close to 
the end of summer in 2013. Okay, so some relatively shortly after starting a relationship with the defendant? Yes, just a few months. Okay. Um, and was that due to his feelings about it? Yes, mostly. Um, I just wanted to make him happy. Like, I didn't want to displease him anymore. We had so many fights about me working in the industry. So towards the end, I would just stop going to my shoots. I would cancel my shoots. Um, I figured if I could stop doing this, then maybe we wouldn't fight as much. I think maybe this would make him happy. Okay. Um, did the defendant go quickly to anger um, during the fights? Um, usually, yes. Um, at some point in your relationship, did, did you start to see an angry side of him? Yes, I did. In the beginning, or when you first started seeing this side to him, um, was the violence physical? Not in the beginning. Okay, can you explain the, how it was? Um, in the beginning, he would remove himself from the situation. Um, he, he would tell me that he wouldn't want to do something that he, that he would regret doing or didn't want to do. So he would remove himself from the situation. And what types of things would make him angry to the point where he would need to leave? It could be anything. I don't remember any specific instances, but we would fight over little things. Like what would be something little and maybe stupid that you guys would fight about? Um, one instance, I was at his, at his place and I was signing magazines and then for a couple of them I forgot to put XXX before my signature and he got extremely mad about that because they weren't all consistent. Okay. And so that would cause a fight? Yes. And cause him to be angry? Yes. Did it get to a point um, where when he got angry he wasn't leaving the room anymore? Yes. Um, and did there start to become physical violence in your relationship? Yes, they did. When, when did that start happening? Um, I want to say three or four months in. How did it start? I don't remember our first fight that became physical. I don't remember exactly what it was over. Um, but when you say it became physical, can you explain to me what he would do like physically violent wise? In the beginning it would just be like a slap in the face and that would be it or just choking me and that would be it. Um, so when you say choking, we've already talked about choking in, you know, in the bedroom, like consensual choking during sex. Yes. Would you consider that to be different than the choking you and I are talking about right now? Yes, it would be very different. Can you explain to me how? Um, there, this was not at my request when we were having consensual sex. I would request him to choke me. Um, he wouldn't normally do it of his own accord. But if we were in an argument and he became violent, he would just begin choking me. There would be no sexual contact before or immediately after. When he would choke you, um, how would he do it? Like, how, what mechanism would he use? Usually he would just use one hand to, um, to choke me. Um, I don't remember him ever using two hands, but sometimes he would put, he would put my neck in the crook of his arm and then uh, put his other arm around it to hold me closer. When he would do this, was your breathing impeded? Yes, it was. Um, would you like see stars or lose consciousness? Usually, yes. Usually you would lose consciousness? Yes. You said that it started with just um, like a slap to the face? Yes. And when you say slap to the face, is that like a, a would it be an open hand? It, it was almost always open hand. Um, when you say it was almost always, um, did he ever, bless you, Your Honor, did he ever use his, uh, use a fist? Not until, not until, um, August 7th. Okay. Um, but before that, the hits were always just open hand or like a backhand? Yes. How often were these types of things happening, like the slaps or the chokes? At first, they, they weren't that frequent, maybe once a month. Um, but as our relationship progressed, the violence progressed also. Um, did you ever fight back? No. Why not? I felt physically intimidated um, and also very scared of him. Um, I was, at the time, 110, maybe 100, 115 pounds, um, and I didn't feel like I could even physically stand up to him in any way. How tall are you? I'm about 5'1". 
Um, you've spoken about you know the choking and slapping, so I'd like to ask you um, to give me two specific instances. And you, um, in speaking with the police, and you testified before the preliminary hearing. Do you uh, recall that? Yes, I do. There was one incident um, that the parties commonly refer like the ferret incident. Yes. Um, can you, do you know, when I say the ferret incident, do you know what I'm referring to? Yes, I do. Okay. Can you explain to the ladies and gentlemen of the jury what happened during the ferret incident? Um, he had come over and I don't remember what I was giving him attitude about that night, but he felt that I was giving him too much attitude. Um, and then he became angry that I told him that I gave my mom a ferret cage because we didn't need it at my house anymore. Um, so that just that just set him off. And he, while I was cooking dinner, I stopped cooking dinner, and he picked me up by the throat and dragged me to the laundry room. What happened when she got into the laundry room? He began choking me. Was he choking you with his hands or with, you know, his forearms? With his hands. Um. When he was doing that, could you breathe? No, I could not. Was it a situation where you started seeing stars? Yes, it was. Did you lose consciousness? I don't know if I lose if I lost consciousness. Um, when this happened, uh, was he yelling at you, or is he just choking you? Do you remember? He was screaming at me, um, and I don't remember what he was yelling at me anymore, but um, he was just very angry that I hadn't talked to him about giving my mom the ferret cage, and he hated my mother, so giving something that I didn't ask him first to somebody that he didn't like was just too much for him. Okay. Did he hit you at all during that um, event? I don't remember now. Um, this happened at your home here in Las Vegas? Yes, it did. And that home's in Clark County, correct? Yes, it is. Would you say that that was in the, the beginning and the middle, the towards the end of your relationship? That was in the early part of July of 2014, I believe. Um, were these types of things happening to you in San Diego as well? Yes, they were. Now, your mom lived with you in your home in Las Vegas. Yes, she did. And you said that the defendant hated your mom. Yes. And was there a constant, um, I mean, it, it went both ways, is that fair to say? Yes, it did. They, they both hated each other. Um, was there an incident where you, you hadn't cleaned the snake's water out properly where your mom was home? Yes. Can you explain that incident? Um, I, he had requested that I change the snake's water a couple of days before, um, and I did, but snakes, when they have substrate in their containers, they get substrate in the water containers. Um, <coughs> so they, while they had an adequate amount of water, it wasn't as clean as he would like, so he told me to drink the water. And then, um, and then when I wouldn't, he picked me up by my neck and carried me up the stairs. By your neck? Yes. Um, where did he, did he carry you all the way up the stairs? He took me to my bedroom. And what happened when you got to the bedroom? He just continued to choke me and yell at me. And then he said, I need to remove myself from the situation before I cause any more damage. Yeah. My mom was home, so she was, she came in and started screaming at him, but he gathered his things and then he left. Um, during that choke, could you breathe during that choke? No, I could not. Um, were you having that sensation where you kind of start to, you know, spin and see the stars? Yes. Did you lose consciousness that time? I don't believe so. When your mom came in, you know, uh, and, and saw what was going on or heard him yelling, um, did she threaten him in any way or yell at him? She said that she was going to call the police if he didn't leave. What time frame are we talking about in regards to that event? I don't know when that was. But it would have obviously been within that 15 month period. Yes. And that was at your same residence here in Las Vegas. Yes, it was. When he would do these things to you, like these choking events or slapping events, 
Um, would he ever take any personal property from you? He would usually take my phone. And why would he take your phone? He was afraid that I was going to call my mom. Why would that scare him if you called your mom? Because my mom would call the police. Okay. Um, do you, I mean, you obviously didn't want him to take your phone. No. Um, but would you allow him to? Um, in the beginning, I would try and get it back, but I just realized it was easier to just let him have it. Uh, how many times would you think that that happened where after a beating or a choking, he, he took your personal property away from you? It was extremely frequently, almost every single time. <coughs> including the counts here, including the acts here in Las Vegas? Yes. Did you feel comfortable telling your mom or your friends that these types of things were happening to you? No, um, I hid it from my mom the best I could. Um, I don't like my mom to worry about me, and then I also didn't want her to call the police. Not John, obviously. So, when you, you know, when you were around your mom, since she lived there, how would you keep things a secret from her? I would hide in my bedroom for days on end. Um, I wouldn't, I wouldn't go and relax in the common areas of the house. Um, but she also spent a lot of time in her bedroom or outside, so it was pretty easy to avoid her. Did you also travel a lot for um, other work-type related things? Yes, I would travel to see John pretty frequently. Were you, were you embarrassed that these things were happening to you? I was extremely embarrassed. I never thought that I could let that happen to me. Um, I always saw myself as a strong individual. and. Um, I realize now that I shouldn't have been embarrassed, but at the time I definitely was. Did he ever threaten you if you did tell? Yes, he did. What did he say? Um, he, would, he said he would send his Navy SEAL friends and the Hells Angels after either myself or my family if he went to, if he went to prison. Did you know him to have friends that were Navy SEALs? Yes. Um, did, did you believe him? I did. Um, I heard him on the phone several times, or what he made me believe he was on the phone several times, um, calling these people and giving them my information, my, my phone number, my mom's phone number, my address. Was there another incident um, when your mom was present when there was an argument regarding you, do, you doing a type of shoot that would possibly entail you having contact with African-American males? Um, it, it wasn't entailing me having the direct contact, but just the site that it would be published on. Can you explain that? Um, he was upset that I had told him, I don't believe this site even does interracial because he was concerned about it. Um, and then he went to the website and saw that it does do interracial. And so he had hit his phone on my head. So I grabbed the phone and I threw it. Um, and then he broke my phone, and then he broke my phone in half, and picked me up by my throat, and brought me downstairs into my bedroom and threw me down. Was your mom there for that? Yes, she was. Um, did she threaten again to call the police? Yes, she did. And when she did, so did he leave? Uh, we, we actually left together. Why did you leave with him? I didn't want him to be in trouble. I didn't want her to call the police on him. I convinced her, you know, everything was gonna be fine. After you would have a violent outburst, everything would be fine. So m me leaving wouldn't, wouldn't you know, result in any more physical contact. What do you mean after a violent outburst, everything would be fine? Maybe we're Yep, yeah, come on.
I am striking uh, the testimony regarding the last incident, which I'm going to refer to as the website incident, and ask the jury to disregard the testimony about that last incident that Ms. McIndoe testified to. Go ahead. Um, were there times in your home where your mother did witness uh, domestic violence happening towards you? Yes, only only a couple of times. And that was committed by the defendant? Yes. I want to move on and ask you some questions. Um, did you ever have like gold-plated fangs? Yes, I did. Can you explain kind of what they look like and where you got them from? Um, they were just caps that go over my my incisors and they're pointy. They basically just look like gold fangs. Where did you get them from? Um, a guy in California um, offered to make me things at a discounted rate and that's something that I had put online that I wanted, so he contacted me and told me that he would do it. Okay. Um, and so did there come a night when you wore those things out um, in public with the defendant here in Las Vegas? Yes. Um, where did you guys go? Uh, we went to a sushi dinner right down the street. And right down the street from your home? Yes. And can you explain, was there any violence that night? Um, as we were going home, well, throughout the day, from he was driving from San Diego that, that night. Throughout the day, he had given me a lot of hell about you know, me getting these things and uh, me posting something for this guy that made the things for me. Well, why did he care about the things? Just because another guy had made me things, okay. um, even though I had paid for them. And I'm not sure exactly why he was so, so upset about them. But, um, so he had, he had given me, you know, hell about that all day, and then we went out to dinner. I wore a wig, which he also didn't like, and then I, I had just gotten the things, so I wanted to wear my new things. And um, as we were on our way home, he just started screaming at me about them, and I gave him some attitude. I said, I like my wigs, I'm going to wear my wigs. I like my things, I'm going to wear my things. Um, what happened when you gave him the attitude? He, he ripped my wig off and I took my things out because I knew he was going to hit me next and I didn't want to either chip my teeth or swallow one of the things. Okay. And so you took them out? What yes. happened after you took the things out? Um, I put them into my bag and he began screaming at me more and more and he turned the car around to go back where we came from. Um, and before we got back to where we came from, he turned down um, Maryland right next to the Boulevard Mall I had taken my seatbelt off because I knew if we hit a stoplight, I'd be able to escape and I wouldn't have to get hit this time. Okay. So um, I took my seatbelt off without him noticing and I tried, when we reached the stoplight, thank God we hit, we hit a stoplight, I opened the door to try and escape and he pulled me back in by my hair and slammed my head down on the dashboard, which chipped my tooth. And then he was still really mad, so he grabbed my head and brought me in and bit my chin right here. In the left part of your bottom chin? Yes. And, uh, and I don't remember how many times he hit me after that, but he turned down the side road by the Best Buy, and he said, now I have to kill you because people saw you trying to escape. He said, now I have to take you to the desert and kill you. Did you feel, I know it seems like a silly question, but did you feel like at that point you could leave? No. Did you feel like you were in danger? Yes, I did. Um, were you emotional? Were you crying? What were you doing? I was, st I still had my seatbelt off. I was bent over crying. And at some point he punched me in the back. Um, and then he took me to a gym parking lot. And he calmed down a little bit. And, uh, he, he licked his hand and tried to wipe some of the blood away. He told me he couldn't take me home like this because my mom was home. Um, he told me he had to clean me up, but everything was going to be fine. Um, and then after that, he took me home. He went inside first. Um, when my mom greeted him, she, he said that I was just, you know, um, getting some stuff out of the car and that I would be in shortly. And then when she went back to her room, he allowed me to come in and go upstairs and clean myself up. What were your injuries after that incident? Um, I had I had a black eye and I had a cut under my eye. I had a scratch on my nose where he had hit me 
um, I had a bite mark here, um, and that, that's pretty much it. My chipped tooth. During these types of is incidents, um, like would he ever say anything to you when he was yelling? I mean, when he was he angry with you and yelling at you? Yes, he was. Like what? Give me an example of like what he would say during an incident like that at the by the mall. He would just tell me I was stupid. He would tell me in, in this instance and several other instances he would try. He would tell me that he had to kill me um, because people would see or because I had made him so angry that he would have to kill me so he wouldn't have to do this again. Um, he would just he would yell all sorts of things at me. Um, when you would have these marks on your face, did you feel comfortable going out in public? No, I did not. When you do go out in public, is it often that people approach you and ask for like either an autograph or to take a picture with them? Sometimes, yes. Okay. Um, and so, is that one of the reasons why you didn't want to be seen in public? Yes, I'm also just a homebody. I, I don't like to leave normally anyway, but even for things like going to get coffee or something like that, he would, he would do it for me in the days after. Um, if someone like a family member or a close friend that you did see, um, if they noticed markings on your face, like what would you say to them? Um, I once told my mom, you know, I, was just, I just fell down the stairs in my bedroom. Um, of course, the, the cliche, I fell down the stairs. Um, but I, I ended up using that. Um, I told my friends that you know, it was just a dog scratch or, you know, my dogs are large, that a dog had hit me in the head, like head butted me. Like it was, I would just come up with any excuse that I could use. You said in the days afterwards um, he would take care of you. So let's say that you know there's there's an incident um, like we were just talking about, um, and then you have marks on your face. In the next days, how would he treat you? It would be the best days of our relationship. He would stay home from training just to be with me, and uh, he would we would watch all my favorite movies. He would go to the store and get all the snacks that I wanted. He'd go get coffee for me. We would order you know, take in a delivery. Um, he would just be around me and make sure that I was okay. Was he loving during those periods? Extremely loving. When you said that there were highs, would you consider that those times right after an incident like this, would you consider that to be high? Yes. After the Boulevard, we, we were, the parties referred to that incident as the Boulevard Mall incident because I, I believe that happened near the Boulevard Mall, is yes. that correct? Yeah. Um, and obviously when I say the Boulevard Mall, I'm talking about here in Las Vegas and Clark County. Yes. Did you take pictures uh, several days after that happened? Yes, I did. Can I approach on Yes. Showing you what's been marked for purposes of identification of states proposed 163 through um, 154. Can you go ahead and take a look at those um, and let me know if you recognize them? Yes, I do. And what do you recognize those to mean? Um, this is, these are, well, this one is included in the text message that I had sent him. Uh, I told him, look how much better my face is getting. Okay. And this is just showing my chipped tooth. Okay. Um, and are these accurate, are these an accurate uh, reflection of the photos that you gave, provided to the district attorney's office? Yes. Okay. All right, at this time I move to admit into evidence states proposed 153 and 154. Any objection? There is none. Admitted. And permission to apologize. Go ahead. Showing you 153, Christine, I'm going to slide it and I'm going to zoom in. Focus in just one sec. There we go. Can you, that little screen in front of you, um, you can circle or cross out, whatever you need to do, but can you show us the injuries that you're talking about? Um, my whole nose is swollen, but this is the, uh, the cut from where he had hit me. And my eye is, my eye is black underneath, but this is another scratch. Okay, and Your Honor, for the record, she pointed to the red mark over her uh, nose and then the red mark of bruising underneath her right eye. Right. Um, and were these taken, how many days approximately were these taken um, after the incident? It would have been after he left, so four or five. 
And now I'm showing you states 154. What are we looking at here? Uh, that's just the, the chip from me hitting my face on the dashboard. Okay. What, at what point did you start taking photographs, or were these the only photographs you took? Um, I took many photographs um, throughout our relationship. I didn't do it at first, but once we started breaking up and getting back together, I <clears throat> saved them like, this is a reminder that I'm not going to do this again. But I'm not going to go back anymore. Did you keep them kind of out on the out in the open? No, I didn't. Um, I started a, a hidden folder for them. That way, he would go through my phone, and if he went through my phone, he wouldn't find them. So you kept them in a hidden folder that he didn't have access to. Yes. Was there an element of jealousy in your relationship? Yes, there was. Um, both of us were a little bit jealous, but I was more so. You were more jealous than he was? Yes. Um, and would you, would you guys get mad at each other in regards to, you know, who had, if there were a lot of females following him on Twitter or a lot of males following you on Twitter? Yeah, he, he would just get in a, in conversations with other females in, in public, like on public tweets and things like that. And that would make me upset that he was flirting with women in the open because I thought it made me look foolish. Um, and then like, I would just catch conversations between him and other females online and it would make me very jealous. Okay. Um, you said that, you know, you don't, find yourself to be an over-sexual person. That's correct. Were there, is there a specific reason for that, or is that just how you've always been? Part of it is just part of me. Like, I don't want to have sex every day, multiple times a day. I don't, I don't need that kind of sexual activity all the time. Um, I don't crave it, but I found myself in the relationship with him. I stopped wanting to have sex at all. Why was that? Um, I just didn't enjoy it anymore. Um, most of the time it was painful. Uh, from having sexual activities so frequently with him, I had a lot of scar tissue um, inside of me that made it very uncomfortable to have sex. And that was con even consensual sex, is yes, that right? Yes, even consensual sex. Was that, did he prefer like rough sex? Not all the time. Uh, sometimes it was rougher than others, but sometimes it was just normal, passionate love. Um, but it, I just, I couldn't keep up with all the sexual activity. My body couldn't. Okay. Was there sexual violence as well in your relationship? Only a few times, yes. Okay. Um, I'd like to talk to you about an incident um, that the parties re refer to as a Houston incident, which didn't happen in Houston. Um, but had you recently been on a trip in Houston? Yes, I went to visit a friend in Houston. Um, and. Where was that in this timeline? Um, it was around my birthday, so around May. Of 2014? Yes. And I apologize because I didn't ask you this earlier in regards to the Boulevard Mall incident. When would that have been? Um, in February, March of 2014. Okay, thank you. I apologize. I had to go back. Um, so while you were in Houston, um, did you find out some information that had upset you in regards to the defendant? Yes, right before I left, the day that I left, um, he was still in San Diego, and I was leaving for Houston that day, and um, I was doing work on his computer, and I found um, screenshots in his cloud from him and other women saying that they were still sore from having sex the day before and uh, things like that. Okay. So you found out he was cheating on you? Yes. He was having, uh, having sex with women that we didn't agree upon. Um, and <coughs> once you get home, do you also find out that one of your pets has died? He texted me while I was in Houston um, and told me that my snake had died, my favorite snake. Um, but before that, he had already put it online. So I saw that. Did that make you angry as well? Yes, it did. So when you get home, um, explain to me kind of your demeanor towards him. I was very cold. 
Um, I didn't want to talk to him. I told him not even to come to Vegas. I told him to stay in San Diego. I didn't want to see him when I got back home. Um, like I didn't want to speak to him. And when I when I came home, I just I just tried to do my own thing. I just tried to lay down, and watch a movie. In your room or on the couch? Where was it? In my bedroom. Okay. And so when you are on your in your bed, um, tell me what happens from that point on. From there, um, he kept trying to get close to me and cuddle me, and tried to initiate sexual sexual contact. How? Um, he touched me, like just on my arm at first or on my leg. He would grab my butt. He would grab my breast. Um, and I rebuffed everything. I, was like, I don't. I don't want you to touch me right now. I don't want. I don't want to have sex with you. Like I, you disgust me right now. I don't. I don't want to touch you. I don't want you touching me. Um, so I would turn away and continue to watch my movie. And he got upset. He got angry that I didn't want him touching me. That um, that I wasn't letting him, you know, make a move on me. From there. Um, I don't remember what I was wearing or what he was wearing or anything, any specifics like that, but I remember him just rubbing me and me like trying to trying to keep covered up. I didn't want I didn't want sexual contact. And um and then he licks his hand and he touches my vagina. And um when you say he touches your vagina, where does he touch? Uh, he he basically licks his hand and wipes from front to back, like in between my big lips. Um, he uh, he just starts he just starts trying. I push his hand away. I say I don't I don't want you to do this. I'm I don't want this. Leave me alone. Um, so he flips me over, and he gets on top of me, and he starts kissing me, and I just turn my head to try and keep watching the movie. Um, from there, he just kind of. He's naked at this point also. He just kind of like gets on top of me and starts like dry humping me and then tries to put himself inside of me. Inside of you where? In my vagina. Um, I say no, I push him away. And then he flips me over and tries to put it inside of my butt. I say no, and this one I can fight off. I fight, I fight this off and I just flip over. And then at this point he penetrates me. Okay, so when he flipped you over when you were on your stomach, he, he was trying to put his penis in your anal opening? Yes. But was he able to do so? No, he did not. And so then you were flipped back over? Yes. And then you said he penetrated you? Yes, he did. What did he penetrate you with? With his penis. Inside your vagina? Yes. Okay. When this is going on, are you, you know, are you saying anything? Are you fighting? I start by saying, no, please don't. Like, I don't want this to happen. And then I just give up. Did you make clear to him that I, this is not what I want. Yes, I did. I began crying at some point. Um, I tell him, stop. And then I just lay there. After it was done, how, how did it end? Um, he got off and then I went to the shower and, and just kept crying. And he started screaming at me, what the fuck's wrong with you? I know it sounds like stupid question but did you want to have sex with him that day no I did not was is there any way that that was your idea of this simulated rape? no had you made clear to him you didn't want to have sex with him that night yes I did or that day that day whichever yes. it was Why did you, okay, let me strike that. After this event happened, um, did you still maintain a, a relationship with him? Yes, I did. Why did you continue to stay with him when these things were being done to you? I loved him. Um, I would have done anything for him. I, I just wanted to be with him. Looking back now, like now that you know you've been out of this for two years, um, is the view different? Yes. Um, now that I've I've looked into abusive relationships and I understand it more. I understand um, manipulation. I understand um, 
abusive relationships between, you know, um, like a boyfriend and a girlfriend and what it entails and how your feelings play into it, I, I look back and I know that's not, that's not how things should have been. Were the, the highs that you've spoken about, like the good times, were they so, so high that you would sometimes forget about the lows? I would never forget about the lows, but the highs made me feel like he may have actually been sorry that it would never happen again, that things would be different this time, like he doesn't want to hurt me, um, that if I would act a little bit differently and try not to make him mad, then you know, th this wouldn't have to happen, things could be different. Why did you think it, you know, if you acted differently, then he wouldn't have to do that to you? Every time he would hit me, he would tell me, if I didn't do this action, then that I wouldn't have to hit you, um, that this wouldn't happen if you hadn't done something. Did you believe that? Did you think that that was... Sometimes I did. Sometimes I really thought, you know, if I if wouldn't have done this, it wouldn't have happened. If, were there times also, um, well, let me ask you this. Besides your mom, were there some friends that either knew or assumed that some of these things were happening to you? Yes. Um, and who would those friends be? Uh, one of my closest friends, Francesca, and her, her husband, Josh. Um, they had seen me at a Christmas party that they were hosting. I came in and I had marks on my face uh, that they had seen. Did you kind of make excuses most of the time to people like that? Yes. Um, and then, besides Francesca and Josh, is there a person named Johnny Rockmore? Yes. And who was he to you? Um, he, we do web business together. So he had access to my Facebook, and in turn, he had access to all of the photos in my library. Can we approach this? Mr. Rockamore, like you were saying, he worked with on your web design. Yes, um, he, we worked with um, with Josh actually for a few different projects, and uh, he handled the person that does my third-party media for my Facebook and things like that. Okay. Um, and so, did he have access to all of the phone, the photos on your phone? Yes, he did. Um, I want to ask you some questions about uh, social media. Um, did you ever post on social media 
um, that John was doing these things to you? I did a couple of times. And first of all, why did why did you make that decision to do that? Um, it would usually be right after a breakup, and I thought, you know, if I let other people know that this is happening, I'd be less likely to go back to them um, because it would make me look bad. So I would, and it was also. It would, it would also be to, you know, make him look bad. So I, w I would post um, on Twitter a couple of times that he had hit me. In, um, when you were an adult film, film star, were you looked at, and I don't know the correct wording of, of this, but were you looked at as kind of like one of the tougher ones, like? Image-wise? Yeah. Yes. Like you were more, I mean, you're covered up now, but you have ta like tattoo sleeves, correct? Yes, and I had a mohawk at the time, yeah. a really dark hairstyle. Um, and so you said that you know, you posted these types of things because you felt like if you let other people know, you'd be more embarrassed to go back to him? Yes. There is, um, were there a couple of sayings that the defendant had that he would usually either say to you or post like on social media? Uh, there were a couple, yes. What were they? Um, one was alpha male shit, which he la later developed into a clothing company. Okay. Um, and the other is real men rape. What is the real men rape thing? Uh, it's just something that he started saying um, about like forcefully taking something that you believe is yours. So he would, he would say that pretty much at any time that he felt like it. Would he also post it to social media? Yes. Um, and was there a time on Twitter when, I don't know if it was Twitter or Instagram, so forgive me, that he had said that he had just raped you? Yes, that was Twitter. Okay. Um, and was that met with a certain degree of anger by the general public? Yes, and um, his, his, the company that was employing him at the time um, I had called him and said, you need to take this down, you need to do something, we're gonna fire you. Um, basically things of that nature. Okay. showing you what's been marked for purposes of identification as states proposed 209 and 210. I'm going to have you look at 209 first and just you could silently look through those and then I'm going to have some questions for you in a moment. Do you recognize all those things? Yes, I do. Um, and what do you recognize them to be? Uh, tweets that John and I had both made. Okay, and is that a fair and accurate uh, depiction of the tweets that you made in re regards to the statement we're talking about? Yes. Okay, Your Honor, at this time I move to admit into evidence states proposed 209. Any objection? Mm -hmm. And admitted. Thank you, Judge. In regards to states 210, can you go ahead and take a look at that? Do you recognize the text messages that are being shown in States 210? Um, I don't. I don't remember them happening, but yes. Are those a conversation? Um, it, do those these fit a conversation that we would have? Okay. Um, and so that is something that those are terms that would specifically be said in between the two of you. Yes. And is that Mr. Copenhaver's number? I'm not going to read it into the record, but is that his number? Yes, it is. Okay. Now at this time, I move to admit into evidence States Proposed 210. No objection. Yes, okay. And permission to publish, Your Honor? Yes, go ahead. Okay. Um, 
I am now showing you States 209, and this is a tweet. Was that um, Mr. Copenhaver's Twitter handle, at War Machine 170? Yes, it is. Okay. It says, just raped at Christy Mack. She tried to make me wait until after Aaron's, as if, and kind of like with a, sm a smiley face. And this was in August of 2013. Oh, sorry. Can you see the... Oh, yes. Okay. Um, and this, this was a joke, correct? Um, yes, it was. It, it was... Should I go into the story? Would you like me to tell you what it's referencing? Yes, please. Um, that day I had told him, you know, we need to run errands. We don't have time for this. I had already put my makeup on. I was already dressed. It was, I was ready to go. And, um, and of course, he, he wanted to have sex, so he pushed me down on the bed, and we had sex. At first, I was saying, no, we've got things to do. Um, we've got to go. And then after a few minutes, I, was just, I just let it happen, and I actually began to enjoy it. Okay. So you, like, I gotta go, I gotta go, and he pushes you on the bed, mm -hmm. um, and he is that yes? Yes. And you're telling him no? Uh, it's not like, it wasn't like the situation that I had told you before. It wasn't like I was crying the whole time. It wasn't like I was screaming at him to stop, um, but I did tell him no. Okay. Um, but when he inserted his penis into your vagina, did you start having sex with him? Yes. Um, and so that's after, the, the, these tweets are after that happened? Yes. Okay. And so on August, uh, same thing, um, he, text, or he tweets, real men rape their girlfriends and wives, not strangers, don't get your panties in a bunch. Um, and then he states, apparently you idiots didn't read my tweet prior to the one y'all are crying about. It puts in the right contact, um, context, sensitive ass bitches. Um, and you said he got in trouble. Who did he get in trouble with? Uh, the owner of the fighting company that he was working for. And then, so did he kind of retract the statement then? Yeah, he had to issue an apology. And he stated, I tweeted something earlier that was stupid, uh, insensitive and wrong. Rape is never something to joke about ever. I sincerely apologize. Is that the apology that he did? Yes. And then um, you issued a... And he told me it would be better if I had also posted something that, that said that's not what it was. Okay, and so you put in, and sorry because it's stapled, but I'm going to read it. Let me make it sure it autofocuses for you so you know I'm reading it correctly. There we go. To be clear, at War Machine 170 says stupid things at times. We all know this. He did not rape me, nor would he rape any woman or man. Is that correct? Yes, that's correct. And that was issued in August um, of 2013. So that would be fairly early on in your relationship? Yes. Um, had the Houston, what we refer to as the Houston incident, had that occurred yet? No. Um, and showing you now states 210, which is text messages uh, between you and Mr. Copenhaver. He sends you a text message. Um, I, it, Paul, yeah, he sends you a text message that says, cool, 823, I love you, sorry I'm a jerk sometimes. And then says, uh, WTF, you knew I hate him, you're dumb, will kill. And then you say, rapes. Um, his response to that is real men does, and you say you're a real man. Yes. So explain to us the context of this experience, uh, this conversation, please. Um, a lot of times when we were having conversations and he was angry with me, I would say things to redirect him, uh, usually sexually. Um, I, could, I could prevent being hit or having him angry with me if I would do something sexual. Um, and just kind of distract him from it and um, I'm not sure what he was talking about with the the will kill um, I don't know who he was talking about that he hated but um, what were what were the last two messages um, you said uh, he he says race you okay you say race yeah
and then this was just an affirmation that he is a real man that I would tell him all the time like yes you're the best you're a real man you're everything uh, at some point did the two <coughs> break up several times yes um, and and then meaning kind of towards the spring early summer of 2014 yes and whose decision was that that was his and bef before that was he living with you in Las Vegas yes he was mostly at my house in Las Vegas and he would go back to San Diego correct yes he would um, but did he have a lot of things at your home yes he did when he left or when he broke up with you did he pack up all of his things and like move out yes he did his uh his friend helped him pack a u-haul while i was in new york and um and the, he drove back to san diego um and when he moved out did he give you your key back no he did not uh i just i think we're going to take a break in a moment i just want to go over one more section with you uh in regards to steroids um, would the defendant sometimes use steroids while during your dating relationship? Yes, he did. Um, do you know, like, how is it that he would take them? Is it a pill or in the injections? How does it work? I would watch him inject himself. I don't know if there's... I know he took pills every once in a while. I don't know exactly what they were, but I would see him inject himself with steroids. Was he, al was he always on steroids? No, I wouldn't always see him inject. Um, and in fact, would you have conversations where you knew he wouldn't be on them um, because it was like a cycle? Yes, um, when he was cycling off for a fight, he would he would stop taking them a certain amount of time before he would fight. Did it matter whether or not he was on or off steroids in regards to his anger towards you? No. So even if he was off them, he would still be angry towards you? Yes, he would. He'd still be violent towards you? Yes. Was he able to um, function? Did he have a job? Yes, he, he would work at the gym. He would teach uh, a small children's class. Okay. Um, you, like you said, he had his own business. Yes, he owned a t-shirt company. Um, and so he was, able, he was able to function, I, I guess is my point. Yes. Um, and Your Honor, would this be a good time to take the